I also just want to hear now, we have a lot of people here who want to speak, but I want to hear from some advocates and residents who depend upon these waterways and to protect these waterways. I want to call up uh, the chairperson of the Natural Resources Protective Association, uh, Ida Sandler. If you live in Manhattan, if you live in Queens, if you live in Long Island, if you live in New Jersey, guess what? This is your problem too. And I'm going to tell you why. Because a lot of the fish that show up in your fish market and your dinner plate are caught right out here. A couple of weeks ago they were catching herring. A couple of weeks from now they'll be catching flounder. The blue claw crabs you had for Christmas dinner were harvested right out here. So everybody that's concerned about health today and about avoiding chemicals in their diet and about exercising, okay? You're having these chemicals in your dinner on your plate because these fish, this oil, anything that goes into the water here is being consumed by the fish that we end up eating. And again, this is not just a recreational fish. It's a very, very important commercial fishery. In fact, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has this area listed as providing essential fish habitat for a number of commercial and recreational fish that we consume. So this is not just a local issue. This is an issue that has far-ranging implications for the entire metro area. And I commend our elected officials here for calling attention to this and for bringing this out to the public. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm actually beginning to wonder if DEC knows that we actually exist out here. Because to this date, I personally reached out to their Region 2 coordinator and I still have not been able to get someone on the phone. And I really wonder if they know if this part of New York exists. I want to call up next a community leader from the Coney Island community who focuses on environments and cleanups, who works with young kids to clean up this coastal area, Pamela Pettijohn. Good morning, everyone. Uh, not only am I a resident of Coney Island, but I'm the president of Coney Island Beautification Project and has been feverishly working with the community and environmental groups to mitigate the contamination in Coney Island Creek. We are deeply disappointed to learn the negative dumping into the creek, be it intentional or accidental. As the community attempts to promote oyster replenishment programs, mushroom planting, and horseshoe crab restocking programs, we feel our efforts are being undermined by unscrupulous entities during this cloak of darkness. And what a major affront our regulatory agency's silence of reporting these atrocities. As, uh, as perpetrators must be held accountable, we must, so must our regulators. We demand the sunshine be shed on the waterways as well as those who are responsible and the people's, for the people's well-being. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. I want to call up next uh, the founder and director uh, of the Coney Island History Project and someone who really uh, cares deeply about our environment and this body of water, uh, Mr. Charlie Denson. And author. <laughs> I just want to thank Councilman Traeger for taking an interest, such an interest in Coney Island Creek. Coney Island Creek is an estuary. It's an important part of the environment. A lot of the agencies still seem to think that it's an open sewer. When I was growing up in Coney Island, everything was dumped in that creek. The community was completely abused. That has ended. We've been trying to end it. The community has taken an interest in it, but for some reason, these agencies have not caught up with that. I was just teaching a class at BS90, a special program they have on ecology, showing pictures of the pollution that's in the creek, and these children can't understand it. They cannot understand it. Why would they do that? Why would you pollute this waterway? This, uh, it's, it's not understandable, but I, I just wanted to repeat what Councilman Traeger said. The, uh, the report from the EPA describing this 27,000 gallon spill, saying that the 
the diesel is subsequently migrating onto the beach and into Gravesend Bay. An unrecoverable oil sheen was observed migrating south beyond the boom, beyond the boom into the bay, which means into the mouth of Coney Island Creek. And at the end, media interest, none. I mean, this is, it's great to see the media here and that there's an interest in this, but this, this is disgraceful. And I'm so glad that this is going to be confronted and hopefully ended. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. I want to call up next uh, someone who has worked very hard, uh, also making sure that the dredging that was happening in Gravesend Bay was in compliance with all DEC regulations. And she found examples where it was actually not. But she's our district leader in the 47th Assembly District, Nancy Tong. Yay. Yay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Today I'm here on behalf of the Assemblyman William Colton and myself. He is unable to come because he's in Albany working on the budget. They're still going on. So there is a statement which he wants me to read for all of you. He said on Wednesday during the New York State Assembly debate on the budget bill containing the $2.5 billion cleanup water grant. I announced my outrage to the de Blasio administration and DEC continuing to show an indifference to a long pattern of environmental disasters in Grafen Bay on and near the Southwest Brooklyn Garbage Station site. I specifically cited in my assembly speech the history of the finding of asbestos on the site just weeks ago without notifying me or other elected officials or the public, as well as failure to give public notice to the judging incident that caused the release of contaminants in the Southwest Brooklyn Waste Transfer Station waters in 2015 release of ponding waters from the site and the blowing off of a large piece of roof from the construction site, which landed on the adjacent nearby property and almost hit a person and a car. I criticized the failure of the city and DEC to give notice to the public and liken such outrageous conduct to the handling of the situation that led to the disasters at Hasek Falls. I praise the Assembly Speaker for supporting this $2.5 billion budget item, but I blasted the indifference of the, both the city and the DEC for creating the need to remediate such incidents. And he also has a video site, if anyone wants to see, that the statement he made on the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you and, and to the assemblyman. And also I want to note this, Pamela Harris is also going to be with him uh, on this budget item. Uh, hopefully they come back. <laughs> uh, I want to call up next a Coney Island community activist and leader for many years. And he's been very, very local on this and many other issues. Mr. Marion Kendall. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Councilman. Uh, the city uh, elected official. I've been a resident of Coney Island for over 70 some odd years. During that time, in fact, uh, the community was always the one that had dumped upon it. Coney Island now, at this modern day, I mean, the direction of the councilman and other elected officials, such as the borough president and others, the assembly person, have brought Coney Island back to a model, clean place to live, a safe place to live, affordable housing stores and everything are now flourishing in the community and some yet to come. However though, in all the beauty there's ugly. And the ugly is what, what we're out here this morning and that is dumping upon the water. That water is not me. I'm getting ready to check on out of this thing called life. But for the children yet to come, they have the right, they have the honor to protect it as well as we should be for them receiving the blessing that God put upon this earth. It is imperative that we understand that you only get one ocean and one river. And if we F that up, we got a problem. I thank you. We need all the support we can get to let people know that this is not a game. This is called life. 
and we must learn to live it in, in respect for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We have with us also the uh, chairperson of Community Board 13's uh, Environmental and, and Resiliency Committee, 